A ziggurat word tonight is stash. It's a common word found every day around the house. I'm on where? La chica hubo la mota en su... Momentito, momentito. Okay, where are you coming from? Uh, Mexico City. Where are you going? Cincinnati. What do you have to declare? Come on. Don't let him browbeat you, Harry. Come on, Harry. What you got? Uh, we have nothing to declare. We're American citizens. You bought the sombreros? Yes, we bought two sombreros. Just a minute, you people. One car at a time. Okay, Harry. You got the sombreros? You got the Aztec ashtray? Yes, we have the Aztec ashtray. You got the silver horse bouquet? Harry, I told you we should have bought the Shut bouquet. up, Edith. No, we don't have these. Well, somewhere. you have to buy them. Twelve dollars, please. Twelve dollars for these? This is highway robbery. Harry, I told you we should have gotten the book in Just a minute, engineer. I'll be with you in one minute. Okay, now you got the book in. Where you got the drugs? Uh, we have no drugs. Come on, the pills. We know you have the pills. You can't search my car. I have to find the pills. Here, I have some pills. Cope. Give me that. Emmanuel, conoce cope. Cope, cope. Cope, no go, lady. Where's the marijuana? My wife, tell the engineer I'll be there in two minutes. Now, where you got the marijuana? There is no marijuana. Got to check carburetor, distributor, calculator. We have no marijuana. You don't have to tell me. I can find it. Hey, man. Hey, hippie. Come on, get out of here. Can't you see hey, I'm busy? That's cool, man. I was just looking at this flashlight here. Wow. That's all you hippies do is hang around. Come on, oh, get out of yeah. here. Okay, mister, no more nice guy. Where do you hide the marijuana? I tell you, there isn't any marijuana. Oh, hello, Kathleen. You just wait a minute. I find the marijuana in these people's car, then I search you. Put your airplane right behind the train. Is it under the seat? This is an outrage. Take off your clothes, ladies. We gotta search you. Why, I've never been in so Well, you're gonna be now. Put the wagons in a circle. I'll be there in one minute. Okay, lady, I'll put the clothes. Yippee, I told you, come on, get out of here. Hey, Santa, you wait next to the train. I'll get to you in one minute. Okay, lady, come on. Off with the underwear. Well, you've got nothing hidden here. Get the cameras off the train tracks. Where is it, lady? Come on. I told you, we haven't got any... Put the bicycles by the airplane and keep the wagons in a circle. Don't you understand? We have no marijuana. I don't believe you. Now take off your clothes. You Mexicans are impossible. Mexican? Who's Mexican? I'm Puerto Rican. Now you take off your clothes. I'll come back in one minute. I'm going to search for you. Set his nostril hairs on fire and drive to Milwaukee. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. U.S. Amphetamine Speedway, Route 69 at the Willoughby Bridge. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. See Heinz, Howard Crow Kruger, and his gas injected Volkswagen Mike Sunday, Dog. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday, see Jack Burns picking up in his cab. Sunday, see Willie the actor Sutton and his bullet. 
Temple Fest. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, free for children under eight. Over nine, under two. Eat tire, Sunday, Sunday. Free for everyone, prizes, trophies, and all classes. Sunday, free dinner, Sunday, Sunday. Don't believe him. No, Sunday, Sunday, free U.S. and Sunday, Sunday. Ow. Sunday, Sunday, see Arnie the Farmer Sedgwick and his supercharged international harvester tractor. Sunday, Sunday. Well, Dick, this is the moment. Astronaut John West, just a few brief seconds from now, will become the first human being to set foot on the sands of Mars. The whole world is waiting. The president is here at the Manned Spacecraft Center so he can speak to astronaut West as soon as he lands. You will have to manually retract the scope. That was astronaut Max Conrad in the MREV, or Mars Reconnaissance Excursion Vehicle, who will follow astronaut West to the surface. Right, Frank. This landing is very similar to the landing of Eagle on the moon just a few short years ago. Seems like yesterday when... Roger, Roger. Uh, you may proceed. That was Houston telling West that he may proceed. All signals are go on this second attempt at a manned Mars landing. There's been no mention on board the Vulture of the ill-fated voyage of its predecessor, the Turkey. That was... The sands look very red from here. Just one more step and... The first words from the first man on Mars. Nearly 400 million people are listening to... Shh. I would like to take this opportunity to publicly apologize to the world for the crimes committed by my government. John, what are you saying? John, get back into the module and lie down. Just relax, John. Now take it easy. This is unheard of, unprecedented. West must be confused and upset. Wait, the president has just grabbed the microphone. Uh, cut off his oxygen. <laughs> Are you Mr. Fine? Sammy Fine, that's right. Can I help you? Well, my name's Rick Fortune. I spoke to you on the phone about getting a disease. Oh, yeah. Well, what did you have in mind? Any special ailment? Well, I'd sure like to get one of the biggies, you know, cancer or muscular dystrophy, one of those. You know, there aren't too many of those left. Jerry Lewis has got muscular dystrophy. Tony Curtis has lung cancer. Cliff Robertson has the retarded. Harry Belafonte's got diabetes. How about children, sick children? That's Danny Kay. And sick teenagers is Danny Thomas. Sick old people? That's Georgie Jessel. Look, like I told you, there's not too much left. St. Vitus Dan's Don Notscott. You know, some of our clients aren't even in show business. J. Edgar Hoover just took on paranoia. Well, how about one of the lesser known diseases, like um, emphysema? You're a singer? Yeah. Emphysema is bad for a singer. An actor, okay, but not a singer. I'll take a look in the file. Let's see. Uh, you might have been good for drug addiction, but we just let Art Linklater have that one. How about Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts isn't a disease. Oh, well, you could have it if you want it. You mean there are no diseases left? Well, there's flu, but that's seasonal. And you want to be on television more than just a couple of weeks out of the year. I hope so. That's why I came here. I thought you could find something for me. Well, we'll keep looking. Well, we got just two diseases unclaimed here. You could have your choice. Acne or hemorrhoids? Well, um... I think for a singer, acne is better. Yeah. I'll set it up. Evelyn, we got a man here who would like acne. When? This morning. Okay, I'll call you back. Somebody, uh, got acne, huh? Dick Clark. I got hemorrhoids, huh? Look, it's a start. Remember, even Jerry Lewis had to start at the bottom. As soon as one of the big diseases opens up, you'll be the first one I'll call. This is Rick Fortune for hemorrhoids. This is Rick It'll Fortune. It'll grow on you. And if you hear of anybody who wants Boy Scouts, you'll let me know. This is Rick Fortune for hemorrhoids. This is Rick Fortune for hemorrhoids. You may have this dreaded killer and not even know it. I'd like to help you rest easier. Here are the 14 danger signals. Itching, burning, redness. And now the market report. Trading was very active in all the major centers today with prices ranging from moderate to good. 
On the New York exchange, Acapulco Gold was up two and one quarter, Panama Red up seven and three eighths, and Kentucky Blue down one and three quarters. A new high was reported in trading in Los Angeles. It's whipped cream and halava selling at four and a half a pound over or under the counter. LSD hit a new peak today after rumors that the market was being flooded with fool's gold. A warning, this fool's gold looks very much like the real thing, but is actually parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Beware. In Washington, the Food and Drug Administration today gave its seal of approval to the new non-cyclamate Coke. Today's stock tip, the Potawatomi Roach Holder Company of Potawatomi, Oregon, is about to market a combination roach clip and air spray. The clip will hold as little as one thirty-second of an inch roach, and the spray is reported strong enough to totally eliminate the smell of 140 dead sheep. No marketing plans have been announced, but it sounds like a good place to put your money. Today's market report, human interest story. Gonzalez, the famous marijuana-sniffing dog at the Los Angeles International Airport, ended his career today when he was sentenced to four years in jail for bearing 14 pounds of marijuana in his backyard. Gonzalez claimed it was a bone. He is now in county jail and has had his tail shaved off. That's it for today's market report. Tomorrow, an interview with importer Carlos Chavez Ravine. Lord and Lady Bug. Lord and Taylor. And now the program that asks the question, does a young woman's search for identity and fulfillment take on hidden meaning? And can love overshadow the shadow of the hour? Stay with us now for heartrending contemporary drama on Love of Grass. As we join Debbie and Bob in their quaint but secure leather shop, Debbie is waiting on a customer. You got papers? This is a leather shop, baby. Out of sight. No papers, no incense, no bells, beads, bananas, pipes, posters, faunus, or purn, just leather. Out of sight, leather. Got no papers. No papers, no incense, no bells, I can no dig beads, it. bananas, Ciao. pipes, posters. Just leather. Debbie just turned leather. suddenly at a sound from the store's back room. Mmph. Bob got out of bed. Morning, baby. Who'd I hear you talking to? Dude wanted to buy some papers. Well, what'd you tell him? Told him no papers, no beads, no incense, no faunus, no pern, no bells, uh, no Billy bananas. been in today? Yeah. Said Dave got busted. Heavy. They broke in last night while he was asleep. Found eight lids under the back seat. Well, that's a bummer. A bummer indeed. Debbie paced the small leather shop nervously. Three of those lids had been for her. Now, with her dope in the hands of the dreaded police, she wondered if she would ever be able to get off again. Oh, Bob. Yeah, that's thread. This is it. Yeah, baby, this is leather shop. Yeah, we take ads, too. The Hard Times Picayune. The Hard Times Picayune. Bob's pride and joy. He had risen from street peddler to picture paster, finally to advertising manager. And he had helped build the Times Picayune into the country's leading underground paper. The only underground paper with a sports editor. Right. Uh, what do you want to say in your ad? Wanted. Orange freak. With size 12 feet. No, you don't have to put in your name. You know, we'll give you a box number. You stop by the leather shop and pick up the letters. Maybe buy a vest, watch me, whatever. Right on, baby. Ciao. Despite the seemingly constant activity, Bob's enterprises were barely enough to keep him and Debbie going. But with the leather shop, the paper, an occasional job playing the 12-string runa, and a little dealing, they managed to live a peaceful and uncomplicated life. Chuck! They're after me. In the back. Debbie and Bob led Chuck into the back room. I'm having a hamburger in the drugstore, man, and I got this package, Dig. Big package? A pound, at least. So anyhow, I eat my hamburger and I split, and I forget the package. You go back? 
course I go back, and there are a thousand narcs waiting for me, so I split again, only faster. You didn't uh, save the package, huh? No way, man. No way. Oh, wow. Wow, indeed. Eight lids gone last night, and now an entire pound. And a thousand narcs chasing me. Yes, and a thousand narcs chasing the defenseless Chuck. What was he to do? I gotta hide, man. But where, man? All we got is two rooms, a bed, and a cash register. You won't fit in the cash register. And I wouldn't get too close to the bed. I've got it! The window! You want me to climb out the window? No, no. Stand in it. They'll never notice you. Yeah, here, put on this leather cape. And leather pants. And here's our $40 leather vest, Chuck. You really look out of sight in it. <laughs> Bob. Sorry, here's, here's a leather hat. Pull it down over your eyes. Out of sight. Oops. Here, pull, pull the hat up till you get near the window. Good, now get in the window. And stand absolutely still. I can't stand absolutely still. Here, smoke this. Okay, nobody moves. Answer it. Yeah. Out of sight. Uh, for sale, instructions to make synthetic grass from household articles. Right on. That'll be in the next issue. Gotta go, babe. Right in the middle of a bus. Ciao. Out of sight. Okay. You got a guy named a Chuck here? No Chuck. No papers, no incense, no bells, no beads, but Shut up. In. Let me see your identification. Okay, what's your name, Bob? Bob. Okay, search the place. Bob, look, there's a fly in Chuck's nose. A fly indeed. Chuck struggled to keep from twitching as he watched the narcs move into the store. Uh, what's this? That's my runa. I play the runa. I don't think it could fit in there anyway. What's in this box? It's an electric motor. Open it up. Close it up. Hey, a couple of you men take a look in the window. Chuck's nerves tensed as the fly started walking up his nose. Debbie and Bob watched helplessly as the narcs headed straight for their defenseless friend. Will the fly leave Chuck alone? Will the narcs leave Chuck alone? Will Debbie and Bob ever be able to score again? Be with us tomorrow for another exciting chapter of Love of Grass. Wow, I should have never taken that much acid. Wow, it's really too heavy. Well, just don't do it again, okay? Okay, where's that acid rescue number? It's around here someplace. Here we go. Three looks like an eight. That's weird. Oh, just never again. Never again. That's all. Don't take it anymore, buddy. Hope somebody's there. Hello? Hello? A chicken is standing on a corner. <laughs> The following program is brought to you in colored. How would you like to be black for a day? Yes, it's black for a day, the show that gives you the chance to find out where it's at, baby. And now, the man in charge of taking care of business, here's Whitey. Yes, it's black for a day, where even the whitest wasp can get himself some soul. Where even the old gray mare can become a horse of a different color. Where people just like you can find out where it's at, baby, what's happening. The in crowd, tell it like it is, and right on. And now, Ace, who are our first three contestants? Our first three contestants, Whitey, are... Mr. Frank Bradley of Hackensack, New Jersey. Mrs. Rosa Kowalczyk of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Mr. Jimmy Lee Campbell of Louisville, Kentucky. Right on, Ace, and we'll get right down to it with Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley, tell us why you'd like to be black for a day. Well, Whitey, you see all the black cats into all the stuff that's going down, Dig. I mean, like they got all the hit records, they're doing all the new dances, they're wearing them Afro clothes. I, I mean, man, they are so together. I want to be black for a day because, well, because it's so hip to be black. Right on, Mr. Bradley, and we'll see if you get your chance to groove in just a few minutes. Now, Mr. Campbell, tell us why you'd like to be black for a day. Well, I, I'll just come up north here, and I'm from the south, and all my life I've been hearing about how good the niggers are. And blacks. Huh? Blacks. We call them blacks up here. Oh, yeah. Well, we call them niggers down there. Anyhow, I've been hearing all my life just how good they are in bed, you know, and I'd like to find out for myself, you know. Sure enough, Mr. Campbell, and we'll see just how real you become if you become black for a day. Now, let's talk to our only female contestant, Mrs. Kowalczyk. 
I want to be black for a day because I'm uh, want I'm wanting to better my, myself. Right on, Mrs. Kowalczyk. And we'll see if your dream of equality comes true. But first, let's take a look at all the other wonderful prizes you and our other contestants will be trying for today. First of all, Whitey, our winner will receive a year's supply of chitlins from Tub of Chitlin. Remember, there's a Tub of Chitlin near you. And our winner will also receive two glorious weeks of harassment from their own local police department. And that's not all. You'll be rejected for the high-paying job of your choice. You'll get to pay $80,000 for a $12,000 home, and then you'll be thrown out before it's even paid off. And our grand prize winner will spend a week in beauty beautiful Biloxi, Mississippi, staying on back the fabulous Biloxi Hilton. You'll smoke dope, you'll sleep with the son or daughter of a famous white movie star, and then you'll join the festivities of a genuine Mississippi lynching. Right on, Ace. We'll be looking forward to seeing which of our contestants wins those great prizes, and which one will be black for a day. Now, to our first question. Name three things a Negro would eat for breakfast. Mr. Campbell? Well, I'd say a uh, bean and some Kool-Aid and, uh... Sorry, Mr. Campbell, but Beulah the Buzzer says your time is up. Your time is up. Right on, Beulah. Now, Mrs. Kowalczyk, three things a Negro would eat for breakfast. Well, I would say it would eat egg and um, an omelet and uh, a sausage. Right on, Mrs. Kowalczyk. Now, Mr. Bradley. I think he'd eat some muscatel, some pomade, and a grit over easy. Right on. And now let's go to round number two. Open the curtains. And there we have three suburban Jewish living rooms. Courtesy of the Suburban Jewish Living Room Company, Mineola, Long Island. And now you have 20 seconds to clean up those living rooms. Look at him go. Right on, Mrs. Kowalczyk. I never thought of hiding the ashes there. And looks like time's up. Your time is up. Let's check those scores. We have a three-way tie. Courtesy Richardson Tie Company, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, it's a tie. And you all know what that means. Yes, it's the solo line with a tiebreaker. Hello? Yes, baby, it is. And what is the tiebreaker? Right on. Now you have 30 seconds to loot a store. Bring in the store. Now go. Look at him go, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Bradley's got a TV set. Courtesy Zenith Company. Two TV sets. Look at that. And three irons. Courtesy General And Company. a small washer dryer. Courtesy General Now Mr. Campbell Richard. is putting on a shirt. Courtesy General No, he's Company. put on several shirts and at least four pairs of shoes. Courtesy Brown Shoe Company. This is amazing. Now there goes Mrs. Kowalczyk. Courtesy Kowalczyk Manufacturing She's Company. got smaller than our other three contestants, but she's trying very hard. We can see that she really wants to be black for a day. She's loading dishes into a dishwasher now. Courtesy Cook and Division. Mrs. Kowalczyk is wheeling the dishwasher around, and she's looking for not sure what. Yes, it's a shopping bag. Courtesy National Food Mrs. Stores. Mrs. Kowalczyk has put the dishwasher into the shopping bag, and now she's headed for the sporting goods department. She's got a bowling ball. Courtesy Brunswick Company. And now she's... Looks like time's run out. Whoops, looks like Mrs. Kowalczyk's disqualified. Oh, Mr. Bradley, he's pushing his dishwasher right into the police car. Courtesy Plymouth Motors Division. Bad luck, Mr. Bradley, and we all know what that means. Our grand prize winner today is Mr. Jimmy Lee Campbell of Louisville, Kentucky, on his way to a dream vacation in Biloxi. Right on, Mr. Campbell, and this is your main man himself, Whitey Jackson, reminding you to tune in tomorrow when it could be your turn to be black for a day. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I had impure thoughts eight times. You must speak up, my son, my hearing. I, I, I Father, I had impure thoughts, Father, eight times. Impure something. I... It's Father, Father. Impure thoughts, Father. You'll have to speak up. There, there are people waiting in line, Father. They can hear me if I shout. What? I had intercourse twice. What? I had intercourse twice. Twice. I had intercourse, Father. Twice, twice. Everyone can hear me, Father. Only God can hear you. I made love to a woman's foot, Father, 19 times. I think my batteries are going. Father, I just ate 2,000 white mice. Ate? She ate something. Gluttony. You must learn to control, my son. You must learn to control. <laughs> Mulato Joe, Mulato Joe, he don't know which way to go. Mulato Joe, he don't know if he white or Negro. 
Have you heard this story of Mulatto Joe and the boss? He don't know where to go. Sit in the front, sit in the back, buy a Volkswagen or a new Cadillac. Mulatto Joe, Mulatto Joe, he don't know which way to go. Mulatto Joe, he don't know if he white or Negro. <laughs> yeah! Mulatto Joe, nice song. Hey, man, sing it, 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 sing He don't know if he white or Negro. Mulat, mulatto Joe, mulatto Joe. He don't know which way to go. Mulatto Joe, he don't know if he white or Negro. Mulatto Joe, mulatto Joe, mulatto Joe. He don't know which way to go. Mulatto Joe, he don't know. I wonder how he is as a teacher. I don't know. I heard he used to be one a long time ago. Well, I guess we'll find... Oh. Good morning, students. I am Mr. Johnson, your teacher and your friend. It is with open arms that I welcome you to Biology 102, Sex Education. We've come together today to study domestic growth. First, the male and the female must unite in Congress, but before that, the proposition must be firm. If the ways and means are present, and if the proper pressure is exerted in the right quarters, the proposition is generally approved. A question from the floor? Yes, young man. Um, y yes, uh, w what about pigeonholing? I'm not prepared to discuss pigeonholing. Any other questions? Now, once the proposition is passed, the delegate from the male enters the chamber of the female. Some people prefer to let the proposition lay in committee and sometimes a filibuster may occur. But generally, once the bill is introduced to the chamber of the female, it is transmitted through the halls of Congress to the upper chamber, and there it may lie inactive for as long as nine months. Occasionally, soon after the bill is successfully introduced, the sponsors of the bill may decide to have it vetoed. In such cases, the support of labor lobbyists is required. Most of the time, however, the development of a new representative commences. This new representative may occasionally be replaced by a bipartisan team or a committee of up to five or six members. Any questions? Uh, yes, if a bill is introduced unsuccessfully, can it be brought up again? Yes, it can. For example, if the bill's passage is blocked or if the congressional session ends before the bill can be accepted, it can be reintroduced. There is, of course, a short waiting period which varies somewhat depending upon the urgency of the measure and the pressure exerted on its behalf. The next time we come together, we will have a demonstration of the use of the majority whip. Class dismissed. Hey. And now let's have a big hand for my old friend, Bill Crosby. I don't see if a lot of people understand or going around and say football. Football is a great sport. Would you go and run, 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 run? All the time up for the little more skinny, or do a pass over to the left. He'd look, run, run, and he'd go over to the left and up and jump up and down. He'd do all the things. He'd go, no, 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 and Francie in the audience, a waving, waving, waving. She didn't know what to do. She didn't see him. He didn't see her. So there they were in the elevator. They were going around. They were seeing the thing, they're going up and down and down and up, but they didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't see Skinny Joe. Skinny, Skinny Joe was so friends, just didn't see him as watching television. He didn't understand. He didn't want to go to the place. He just bought the place to say it for him and thank him very much. Hey. Come on, Al. Bill Cosby. Come on, Al. Come on. Come on, Al. Hey. 
And now, let's have a big hand for the West Point Glee Club singing I Get High with a Little Help from My Friends. Good evening, brethren, and welcome to the First Atheist Congregational Church. Today's sermon from the book of Madeline Murray will deal with the reasons we should all go to work as usual on Thanksgiving. But before the sermon, a few announcements. As you know, our church raffle begins this week, and the grand prize will be a beautiful new four-door Chrysler. We are sorry to announce the cancellation of tonight's naked dancing in the forest. The press somehow got word of it, and there are three or 4,000 people out there waiting for us. This event will be rescheduled. And now, a parable. There was a man who prayed to God, and he died. God! Now, I would like to introduce to you a new member of our congregation. My name is uh, Ron Eppel. I was once a pious man. I prayed faithfully. Golly. I went to church uh, religiously. Golly. I watched Fulton J. Sheen reverently. Golly. I started off each day with a glass of holy water. Golly. And then I was saved. Yippee. Yippee. In gratitude, I would like to offer a prayer of my own uh, composition. Give us strength for this life. Give us a fortitude to face death. Give us everlasting bliss for eternity. Give us strawberry fields forever. Golly! Golly! Golly. Golly. Thank you, Brother Ronald. And now, if you will all join with me in hymn number 83. You know that the church is always in need of your donations. However, we do not expect you to give something for nothing. And so we are selling these realistic plastic statuettes of Madeline Murray. Every car should have a plastic Murray on the dashboard. These are available in the church gift shop. Next week's sermon will deal with the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Now, if you will turn to page 264 of our... Your Eminence, uh, Mr. Carstairs is here for audience with you. Send me. Morning, Your Worship. My name is Frank Carstairs. Good afternoon. I represent Lake Havasu City. My ring. You didn't kiss my ring. I understand you're planning to retire next year, and I knew you'd want to spend your golden years basking in the bright Arizona sun of Lake Havasu City. It's the retirement capital of the world. I got more important things to think about. Nobody pays me any attention no more. The priests are asking for the bell bottom investments. The only ones who still are with me are the pigeons. Pigeons, Mr. Pope? Did I hear you say pigeons? Why, in Lake Havasu City, you'll find a hundred kinds of birds flying in the pure Arizona air. My dear fellow. Dear, I'm... sure thing, Mr. Worship. Dear, buffalo, wild animals abound in Arizona. Here, take a look at these slides. Here you see other old folks, just like yourself, Mr. Worship, enjoying the pollution-free Arizona air. I have air. no pollution. The Vatican, she's air-conditioned. Here's a shot of the thrilling octogenarian pole vault finals. I don't do that. And here's... I don't do that. And uh, uh, here are some of your friendly future neighbors on a field trip to the grocery store. Hey, what are they wearing? Uh, those are Bermuda shorts. Uh, and here's our famous Lake Havasu City Barbershop Quartet. I don't sing. I have people to do that. Oh, come now, Mr. Pope. You can sing. Everyone can sing. Oh, no, I don't. Come on, Mr. Wizard, try it. I can't. Uh, 
Camp Town racetrack, five miles long. Oh, Come on, no. Mr. Worship, sing along. I don't think. All you have to do is sing Duda. Duda, that's all you have to sing. A Camp Town racetrack, five miles long. Duda, Duda. Great, Mr. Worship, great. You're doing fine now. Camp Town ladies, sing this song. Duda, Duda. Great, Camp Town racetrack, five miles long. Oh, Duda, Duda. This is it, guys and gals, the new thing, the moving, grooving thing. You said school was a bummer? Well, baby, it ain't no more. This is... Top 40 Education with the one and only Doc Rock. Now keep your ear pressed to that blackboard, because we're switching to English Central and Super Prof. Gotta learn to dance before we learn to walk. Gotta learn to spell before we learn to talk. And Super Prof's here to please with an A. Super Prof, Super English Time. Correct this sentence. I want my pimples should clear up. Tired of classes that keep throwing the book at you? Well, now you can sign up for one that'll let you use your own hands to make valuable objects. By the time we got to wood shop, we were half a million strong. Everybody's heading for wood shop. Stop by and talk to the carpenters. Before you know it, you'll be making your own hat racks, birdhouses, wooden legs. Check it out today. You can study the moon or the balloon. You can analyze the tune or the sector at moon. Cause science man's coming in the room. Science man with a big B biology. Today we're going to study bacteria. How we're going to infect ourselves with botulism right after this message. And now a statement of editorial opinion from Mr. Harry W. Keister, general manager and principal. It has come to our attention that large numbers of pupils have been walking in the halls without a pass. From now on, if you are caught in the halls without a pass, you will be shot. Thank you. And now, the news. Professor Scoop with the latest poop. A big fight in the second floor boys' washroom puts washroom monitor Bruce Purvis in the infirmary again. Sophomore chemistry lab is raided by the narc squad. The principal reports that someone has stolen his desk. And in the lunchroom, milk goes up a penny today after the threat of a strike by Bessie and Viola. Now, down to our between periods traffic spotter. This is flying patrol boy Billy Bumpo cruising on the first floor just north of the tardy office. Traffic is moving very... Oh, oh, a locker is open and a bunch of books have fallen on the floor. Traffic is really backing up. It's a bad one. If you have a class at this end of the first floor, I suggest you attend an alternate class on the second or the third floor. Well, that's the bell. We'll be back with another flying traffic report between fourth and fifth periods. Now we switch you down to phys ed. Hi! This is phys ed here with the gym class. Today we're going to meditate. Ready now? Meditate! One, two, three! 
three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, everybody meditate here. One, two, you there. You're not meditating. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're gonna do some inhaling exercises. But first, this message. Where can you go between 12 and 1? Where can you go for a fight or fun? Where can you get sick each day at noon? Right, gang, the lunchroom. No far out organic foods, just good old American oatmeal burgers. Stupendous grease flavored french fries. Delicious chocolate milk, chock full of nourishing wax. It's all in the lunchroom where you get yesterday's food today. This is Nancy Fancy with Home Economics. Today we're going to learn about our clothing. And the way we're going to learn is by making an actual piece of clothing we can wear ourselves or give to a friend. We are going to tie dye a tie. Now, watch carefully. First, we take the tie we're going to dye and tie it. When the tie is tightly tied, we dip the tie in the tie-dye dye. When the tie-dye tie is dry, we untie the tie and take the dye we've just applied and set it aside. Retie the tie-dye tie, take another dye, dip the retied tie in this dye too. Take it out, let it dry, untie the tie, and you've got a tie-dye tie. And that tie's not all you can tie-dye. You can tie-dye a tutu too. Take the tutu, tie the tutu, dip it in the dye, let it dry like the tie we dyed. Now tear the tutu in two. Now you've got two tutus to tie. Tie-dye. Take the two ties you tie dyed and the two tutus you've torn in two and tied and dip them in the dye. And now, the all night obituary of the air. Spuffer Michael J., age 67, of Encino, California. Beloved husband of Lucille and Margaret. Father of two daughters, Delilah and Delicious and two sons, Elizabeth and Helen, grandfather of 19, Joseph, Edgar Winston, Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Arrow, Smith, Rhinoceros, Bernie, Yorty, Shorty, Ted, Fred, W4, Rhododendron, Abercrombie and Fitch, burial Tuesday in the family garden. An open letter to the youth of America. Dear youth, I'm writing this letter with a heavy hand. There are great troubles in this glorious land that us old people once died to save. And I feel that today's young need to listen to the raspy voice of today's old. Us old people are the ones who built the toll roads and the condominiums, you know. We invented the electric pencil sharpener and the disposable stove. We're oldies but goodies. After all, who founded this great land but old people? Why, George Washington would be over 200 if he was alive today. Marco Polo, he'd be over 600. You have no respect for the old values like money. Without money, where would our millionaires be? Great Americans like Scrooge McDuck. Pay attention, youth. Make sure you wear good, sturdy shoes. God only gives you one pair of feet, and if you ruin them with bad shoes, you'll end up walking weird like Fred Barton works out at the pharmacy. And the way you live, all together in communes, eating together, sleeping together. Shameful, it's uncivilized. Right on. You ought to live like us old people do in a boarding house. And the idea of getting married when you're 18, 19 years old? Foolishness. You should wait till you're old and have children of your own. And about your hair. Long hair's okay with me. Some of our greatest Americans had long hair. Like that famous actor, John Wilkes Booth and, and Eleanor Roosevelt. And when I hear you disagreeing all the time, all the time disagreeing, that's all right, youth. It's American to disagree. As American as apple pie or a prune danish. But if you're going to disagree, you should disagree with another youth, not with us old people. And another thing, youth, you don't eat food. It's something else, something that deeply disturbs all of America. Youth and drugs. You should never take more than two aspirins. Two aspirins every four hours. Avoid continued use. Do not operate heavy machinery. Avoid or prohibited by law. Close This is the late Edward R. Murrow with the late news from heaven. 
Tonight's headlines, police seized 35 pounds of angel dust in a raid on John Cocteau's house. George Washington Carver demands royalties from the peanut butter industry. Thomas Jefferson's comment on that, power to the peanut, right on. And now, let's switch to Gossip Central for a peek behind the clouds. Hi gang, this is Oscar Wilde with a hot flash. Oh. Well, Casanova was seen leaving the palace last night, and his only comment was that Catherine the Great really wasn't. Jesus Christ has been just impossible since he became a superstar, and now he's moving to an unlisted cloud. Jesus Christ, Jesus. And today's big item, Al Jolson leaves tomorrow to entertain all the dead troops. That's it from Oscar, Ed. Thanks, Oscar. Now, here's an anti-drug message from W.C. Fields on Cloud Nine. Ah, yes. Drugs are harmful to your corporeal functions, and they do not satisfy the taste buds nearly so well as a nip of the old barley corn. Thanks, Bill. Now... I'll never forget the time I died. I was lying supine in my chamber, and my eyes slowly closed. Thank you, Bill. Next thing I knew, I was in heaven. And then there was a time I was hunting larynxes in the Serengeti plain of Africa. Thanks, Bill. And now... We were surrounded by hundreds of little Thank devils. you, Bill. Now, for a look at what heaven's thinking, as we switch down to our man in the street, William Randolph Hearst. Come in, Randy. We're down here on the Golden Streets, talking to passers-by, and... Here's a face we all know, Abe Lincoln. What do you think about the current situation back on Earth? I think it's a mess. The niggers uh, are Abe. all... Abe! Uh, Thanks, Abe Lincoln. Now, oh, here's Spike Jones. What do you think about the current world situation? I see. And here comes Confucius. Sir, can you give us a little philosophical comment? Girl who fly upside down in airplane... Uh, sir, have... uh, you, uh... Oh, here comes... A excuse me, aren't you Paul McCartney? No, I'm just a rumor. Well, that's it from the man on the street. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Are you bored with your present job? Does your life seem more like a life sentence? Well, now there's an amazing opportunity for young and talented people in the rapidly expanding area of jurisprudence. Yes, you can have success, even wealth, by enrolling now in the famous judges' school. You may be under the impression that it takes years of training to become a judge, but you're wrong. America's ever-increasing backlog of court cases and the shortage of qualified judges have created a crying need, and more old judges are leaving the bench every day. Just look at today's headlines. Judge indicted for extortion. Judge gets 30 years. Judge caught running a call girl ring. Who will replace these men? Why not you? Send for our free booklet, Career Opportunities in the Judging Profession. It could be just the reprieve you're looking for. Crean, Harlow W., age 39, of New York. Beloved roommate of Bruce Purvis, also of New York. Survived by four poodles, Winky Poo, Nanky Poo, Dinky Poo, and Hanky Panky. In lieu of flowers, please send donations to the Dreyfus Fund. Yes, ma'am. Just come in and fill out the forms, and the doctor can perform your abortion right away. Thank you for calling. Can I help you? I'd like to get an... and I'd like to have my... Calm uh... down now. There's no need to be embarrassed anymore. This is an enlightened age. Sit down, we'll fill out the forms, then the doctor will take care of you. You sure it's all legal? Perfectly legal. We want to get rid of the stigma of having an abortion. It's legal, it's sanitary, it's expertly performed, and it's 100% safe. Now, can I have your name? My... my name? We need your name for the form. Can't you do it without my name? Remember when abortions were illegal? Girls went to butchers who never asked their names. It was dangerous and unsanitary. Times have changed. This is a reputable hospital. An abortion is as acceptable here as an appendectomy or a lobotomy. Now, your name? Elizabeth Groon. Married? Single. Father? Father? Yes. Uh, who would have been the father? Do I have to tell? It's for the records. Herbie Feeney. 
Would this have been your first child? Yes. May I have his name? Whose name? The child's, the abortees. What would his name have been? We hadn't really decided on one. I see. John Doe Feeney. Groon. Groon? John Doe Groon. We're not married. I see. Well, that answers most of our questions. Now, if you'll undress, I'll ring for the doctor. You're... you're sure it's going to be all right? Perfectly all right. Dr. Brooks is the best in the business. You'll be on your way home in an hour. Uh, without John Doe Groom. Well, I guess... Uh, hello, Miss Groom. I'm Dr. Brooks. Would you lie down on the table, please? And don't be afraid. This is all perfectly legal and perfectly safe. All right? Yes. Good, good. Nurse, prepare the coat hanger. Okay, okay, all your prisoners in your seats. There'll be no standing during a concert. Yada, 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 one! <laughs> Shut up. That's better. Now, the administration of Wholesome Prison is proud to present Johnny Hicks. He's gonna go to prison. I'll never forget the time I was in prison. One time I stomped a cop. You know about cops. They hang around in prison. Well, I stomped this cop. And that was when I went to prison. Before we start singing, I like to thank the war for letting us come here today and he asked me to make one announcement the warden asked me to tell you prisoners that when the concert is over we're going to march out in single file and return to your cell I keep a close watch on this watch of mine Cause they don't set me free till 1989 But while I'm here in prison doing time The things I'm learning suit me real time And the warden is a real good friend of mine Life in prison is mighty hard They won't let you in the yard, yard, yard. I'll spend my days cheating at cards and my nights with a very friendly guard and the warden, good friend of mine. And the warden, a good friend of mine. They teach me things to make me cope. I learn to make ashtrays, learn to make ropes. I worked in the laundry, I dealt some dope, and I learned in the shower, never drop the soap, and the warden, a good friend of mine, and the warden, a good friend of mine, I can't wait for rehabilitation, I can go outside and use my education, cause the things in this here situation Give me lots of ideas About my future occupation And the warden Real good friend of mine And the warden Is a real good friend Of mine Thank you Thank you Thank you very much Barlow, Elvira, age 88, of Pneumatic, Kansas. Beloved wife of the late Steve Elephant, the late Martin Van Buren, and the late Waldo Barlow. Loving mother of Fluffy Barlow, known professionally as Fluffy Marlow. 
and of Billy Barlow, known professionally as Fluffy Barlow. Body may be viewed in the family freezer. And now the program that asks the question, does a young woman's search for identity and fulfillment take on hidden meaning? And can love overshadow the shadow of the hour? Stay with us now for heartrending contemporary drama on Love of Grass. When we left Debbie and Bob, the police were searching the leather shop for Chuck the dealer, who was hiding in the window disguised as a clothing display. Chuck was struggling desperately to keep from sneezing as a fly walked slowly up his nose. One sneeze and it would be curtains. He's got to be here somewhere. I saw him come in. Take a look in the window. You take a look in the window. It's four o'clock. I'm off duty. So am I. Don't any of you kids leave. We're sending the next shift down here to look in the window. Let's get out of here. Boy, that was close. Help me out all this leather stuff. You okay, Chuck? Yeah, I'm okay. You got any dope? At the left, we figured that you... Hey, Smash, how you doing? Nah, I just ate a Kawasaki. Ate a Kawasaki? I said I did mean the gang. The gang, indeed. Smash had quit the Masons to become the legendary leader of the most dreaded motorcycle gang. Club! Uh, the most dreaded motorcycle club in the state. The infamous Hell's Bells. You got any dope, man? Have I got any dope? Is the sky blue? You got any dope? I said I got dope, I got this hash. Is it any good? Is it any good? Does Cleveland start with a K? Does Cleveland start with a K indeed? This hash come directly from my old lady's ex-old man's cousin, who got it straight from the hands of the guy who got it from the road manager of the Organic Rhythm Airs, who got it as a special present from a chick who actually once met Mick himself. Is it any good? Yeah, is it any good? Don't push me. You got a pipe? No pipes, posters, bells, Oh, shut me. up. Yeah, here's a pipe. Yeah, this is a leather shop. Right, we published The Hard Times Picayune. The Hard Times Picayune. Bob's pride and joy. It had started as the Lancaster Cat Letter, and Bob had built it into the country's leading underground paper. The only underground paper with a furniture section. Okay. Give me your ad. Erotic acts between my buffalo and your girlfriend. You watch, I watch, we all get off. Yeah, we'll give you a box number. Right on, baby. Ciao. Bob, I want you should make something for me. Another pair of leather sunglasses? No, I, I want to put leather tires on my bike. The front one should have a picture of my old lady, and the back one should say you've just been run over by the hell's bells. Yeah, we could do that. Hey, Debbie, this pipe's all clogged up. I think there's another pipe in the back room. Try some of this stuff in the meantime. What is it? Snuff. What do you do with it? You shove it up your nose. Shove it up your nose, mother! No, no, don't hit him, don't hit him. De Debbie, go find that other pipe. That other pipe indeed. Debbie went into the back room to begin searching through a two-year collection of debris. Bob, Chuck, and Smash were growing impatient when the front door opened and... Where's my daughter? Daughter? This is a leather shop. No daughters, no pipes, no posters. My daughter's run away. There's no runaways here, man. Why don't you run away? Can can I can I leave a picture of her here? Maybe if someone will recognize her, I... Sure, sure, yeah. Just, just stick it up on the wall right next to the door. Thanks. Okay, bring in the picture. Hey, you can't put up a billboard in my store. A picture of my daughter. You said I could put up a picture. A picture of his daughter, indeed. The distressed father ordered his six-man crew to hang it up on the wall. There. Someone's sure to notice it. Notice it, indeed. Bob, isn't that... It sure is, Smash. It's Debbie. Debbie, indeed. Will Bob's old lady be wrenched out of his life? Will Debbie ever find that pipe in the back room? Will Nixon end the war? Be sure to be with us next time for another thrilling episode of Love of Grass. <laughs> And now, the stupendous strongman, Crunchy Granola, will pick up a sailor. The owner of the 1968 Plymouth, California license, AJS 243. Please remove it from the driveway. Come on and ride the ego trip. Come on. Hey, how about a little boost for the old ego? Come on, you, sir. Step right in here. Yes, you.
Oh, you, you don't want to be just the plumber. I'm just the plumber. Come on inside, sir. Fifteen cents. Thank you. I'm just an ordinary person. You know, you don't want to. Just put this device on your head, sir. That's it. I, I, I don't belong here. I'm just the plumber. I'm just... I'm the greatest plumber in the world. Boy, can I put in a pipe? I can put in a pipe better than anybody. Boy, am I a plumber and handsome. I must be the handsomest plumber in the world. I'm a genius. I'm, my God, I can tap dance. Tap dance. And I can do clock reels. I'm the most talented plumber in the world. The ego trip, the ego trip, ride again, 15 cents. Come on, ride the ego trip. <laughs> you don't want me. I'm just a plumber. I mean, I'm just... The great predictor looks into the future and, yes, I see. I predict that marijuana will be legal in 19... Oh, 19... Uh... Oh, uh... oh, 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 19... Uh... Oh. Oh. Come on, get your ice-cold mother's milk. Come on, get it. Thank you. Would you look at this, Ethel? I never heard of an amusement park that had an orgy. Swedish orgy. It might be fun. I'm not taking you to a Swedish orgy. Then I'll go in without you. And you're not going in there alone. Isn't this exciting? Oh, yeah, really exciting. Welcome to the Swedish Orchie. Take off the clothes, I'm yeah. I'm not taking off my clothes. We have a girl to help you, Olga. Hey, I thought Swedish girls were thin and beautiful. Ah, uh, Olga is so quick at the undressing. Olga, enough! Down, Olga! Good girl. Now we prepare for the sex activities by yumping in the cold water. I'm not yumping in any cold water. Olga! Yeah, now Olga helps you out in the cold water. Thank God. And into the hot water. Let me out of here. I'm boiling. Play the game, Arthur. You play the game. I'm getting out of here. And keep that Swedish Godzilla away from me. Olga! No! Now the Swedish masseuse lays the man on the smorgasbord and rubs the fresh bay leaves on his body. See, Arthur, doesn't that feel good? It feels better than the boiling water. Ah, uh, Olga is so good with the Baileys. It makes me think of the good old orgies we used to have in the snow in Sweden. I haven't had a good snow job in 40 years. Yeah, those were the days. I remember what we used to do with two women in a Volvo. Yeah, but most of all, I remember Mama. Yeah. Isn't that enough already with the leaves? Enough, yeah. Come over here now. No, I burned my feet. Yeah, those are the odd bricks. The odd bricks make the blood circulate for the sex activities. Could I put my shoes on? No, my no. My socks? Oh, no. We stand on the hot bricks. Then we pick one of them up. Oh! You hold your hot brick in your hand like... Get your hands off my brick. Now the wife... Me? Yeah, the wife takes the man's hot brick and holds it in her hand while the man goes out in the snow. I'm not going out in any snow. Olga! I'm not going! No, would you get your hands off me? I'm, I'm not going! Have your picture taken in a wheelchair. Ten cents. Come on. Ten cents. Step right up. You sail away on the first, the last, the one and only voyage of the good ship, Titanic. Step right up on the gangplank. You step this way. Welcome to the full-size replica of the Titanic. Please stay within the yellow lines and do not throw objects over the side. The Titanic was the largest ship ever built, four city blocks in length, 11 stories high. This is the largest replica ever built, four city blocks in length, 11 stories high. I am the largest guide ever built, four city I am an exact reproduction of the Titanic's captain. Through the miracle of modern electronics, you will see the legendary tragedy of April 14, 1912, exactly as it occurred. As you know, the Titanic is unsinkable. However, we do carry emergency lifeboats for approximately 1,100 people. If you will look to your right, you will see some of our 2,207 passengers enjoying the mechanical reproduction of a pleasant spring evening. We have struck the iceberg. Please stay in line behind your tour guide. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no danger. Any two of the Titanic 16 watertight sections can be completely flooded and we will still have... Three sections are flooded! Please stay within the yellow lines. Do not touch the survivors. To your right, you can see some of the Titanic's 29 boilers exploding.
stand in the first class kitchen, you can hear the shattering of 15,000 cases of champagne, 8,000 cases of shelled walnuts. Children first. I am a child. I'm five years old. Let me on that boat. Don't rock the boat! If you look to your left, you will see a number of simulated bodies floating in the water. That is real water, and the temperature is a simulated 29 degrees Fahrenheit. And to your right, you can see the servants being thrown out of the first class lifeboats. You will notice several bodies falling from the upper decks of simulated flames. Please do not step on these bodies. Stay within the yellow line. And there goes the Titanic switchboard. There are 50 telephones on board the... Number? 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 Listen closely, you will hear the simulated wailing of a number of small children who have become trapped below the decks. This wailing is just as it was on the night of April 14, 1912. Please do not try to rescue the children. If you look down, you will see that the simulated water has now risen to your knees. Pay no attention to this. Now, if you will follow me down these steps, being careful. the owner of a 1971 Lincoln Continental, Nevada license plate 1. Please remove it from the atrium. Spare chain. Spare chain. Uh, yes, I'll have the Chief Justice Burger. And a Frankfurter. Spare tire. Spare tire, mister. Come on, come on, ride the accident. Come on, how about you, little girl? That's it, step right in. Ride the accident. Mommy, I had an accident. Spare ribs, spare ribs, miss. This is spooky. I was never in a wax museum before. Wow, does he ever look strange? That's Edgar Allan Poe. What's he putting in his nose? <laughs> Once upon the midnight dreary, oh wow, yeah. While I pondered, mumbled bleary, that's no good. <laughs> ah, while I pondered weak and weary. Hi there, I'm George Washington. <laughs> I've got the biggest hemp plantation in Virginia. <laughs> Can I offer you a taste? Hi Dr. There. Watson, I can tell from the simple clues that this syringe was filled with, uh, yes, with, uh, uh, yes. Who's this one? It's Sigmund Freud. Hey, look. This cocaine is driving me crazy. It's driving me crazy. I'm going crazy with the cocaine. Oh. Keep your right hand on the right hand rail. Your left hand on the left hand rail, and both hands on your wrists. Friends, you're looking at a device that'll save you hours of toil and trouble every time you feel the natural urge to get stoned. Yes, this is the amazing dopamatic you've heard so much about. Simply drop in a... Get away from me, kid, you bother me. Simply drop in a lid of the seediest unclean dope. The dopamatic automatically removes the seeds and plants them, then rolls the pure seedless leaves into perfect joints. Hundreds of joints from one lid, thousands from a kilo. Yes, and this talented little machine will even smoke your joint for you, and then it will sing and play your musical instrument. And that's not all. No Oh, sir, if you order right now, in addition to your dopamatic, you'll receive absolutely free a vegematic. It minces, quinces, rices, dices, slices, and cuts prices. It will make a pile of splinters out of anything from an onion to an automobile. And it's all yours if you order the amazing dopamatic today. Void where prohibited by law. Hi ho, Escargo! Who was that? Miguel de Gourmet. Of the silver and lavender Rolls Royce, Quebec license four nine seven three two one four five six nine three one. Please remove it from the men's room. You are entering Bummerland. 
May we direct your attention to the world's greatest roller coaster, the Downer. Be sure to see our musical attraction, the Ecology Bandwagon, featuring Brown Rice and his band of renown. You are entering Bummerland. May we direct your attention to your own inadequacies. Be sure to visit your own mother in genuine styrofoam, no 80 feet high. Eating or snorting. All right, step right up. Step right up and ride the downer, the most exciting. I'll buy a ticket. A bright young man. Yes, the most you say. One more. Step right through the gate here. Okay, all aboard. Can't ride without a ticket. Ride the downer, the most. Step right into it. Okay, close it up. Hi there, I'd like to sell you some insurance. No, the Rolling Stones were last night. and he'll be president again. Okay, honey, okay. We got your order. Okay, honey, it takes time to cook, you know. We cook everything to order, honey. Empty your suitcase on the counter. Okay, honey, it's cooking. Greetings from the president. That number is listed in your directory. I just asked for a trim. I'm afraid you got the big C. You gotta get that water bed out of here. We've been going over your tax return and, uh... This is what you ordered, honey. The doctor said all you have to do is come in for a shot. All right, step right up and ride the downer. The most exciting ride. Kool-Aid, get your Kool-Aid. I just cut my finger. Uh, this is Kool-Aid. You want first aid. Turn left. Step right up. Okay, okay. Come on, dunk the cup. Three baseballs for a quarter. Hit the bullseye and watch him fall in the water. Come on, you Yeah, have... yeah, here's my quarter. Get ready for a bath, pig. You're the one who needs a bath, you hippie weirdo. Why don't you cut your hair? You'd be able to see, freako. Another minute, I'll see you in the water. You freako commie. If you were a real American, you'd know how to throw a baseball. You'd be a... Ooh. Sit there and soak, pig. What's my prize? Prize? You're under arrest for assault with the police officer. Will the owner of a Hickey Freeman suit please remove it? Kool-Aid! Get your... I will have one. This is Kool-Aid. You want foreign aid. Turn left. What's an attempt? I don't know. Come on, kids. Come on. See the sideshow. The wonders of the world right inside. Come on. You'll see Madame Patchouli, the oil woman. You'll see the tattooed man, the mule-faced boy. You'll see the fat lady eat a pound and a quarter of organic chicken liver right before your very eyes. Come on. The show's about to begin. This better be worth it. I think it's perverse. Perverse, young lady? Just the word. Step right through the gate. Come on, step over. Ladies and gentlemen, I was born of normal parents, but I am a freak of medical science. I was born, as you see me now, half hip and half straight. You say, ugh. Be thankful you are not like me. You see on the one side the long hair, the bushy beard, on the other the crew cut. You see the right side of my body stoned on grass, the left side drunk. The right side of my body goes on peace marches, the left side throws rocks. Give prayers that... There are 2,309 separate tattoos on my body, and each of them does a trick when I move my muscles. Notice the hula girl on my bicep. See how she dances. Yeah. Notice on my back how the sailing ship sinks in the ocean. Notice the large and fancy door on my stomach. When I move the muscles, the door opens and you see hundreds of people waving to you. Hello, hello! Notice the train around my waist. When I move, the train goes to Cincinnati. And when I bend over, it spells, wow! There's no other thing. He's gonna do this 
trick. I light the candle and I put it in my mouth. Oh! And I proceed to swallow it. Ah, a good candle. In addition to being a fire eater, I am also a rain drinker and a windbreaker. First, I will demonstrate the drinking of a rain, and then I will demonstrate the breaking of a wind. Hey, Linda, flea circus. Flea circus, young man, you dare insult my performance? Sure looks like a flea circus to me. Young lady, you see before you the most talented array of insects under the hippodrome, and that one mangy flea among them. They still look like fleas. Young man, watch the acrobats. Notice how they walk the tightrope, how they swing on the trapeze. These are no mere fleas. What are they? Crabs. You trained crabs? I trained mine, you can train yours. Crabs are much more talented than fleas, and easier to get. Take a look over here. See the chorus line? Yeah. Ringworms. And these over here, the ones balancing the balls on their tail. They're streptococcus viruses. Sure, we got them all. We got the long During long your long. stay in Conception Land, be sure and visit our attractive whorehouse. Kool Aid, get your. This is Kool Aid. You want Band Aid? Turn left. Okay, folks, the show's about to begin. Right inside our tent, you'll see the one, the only, Mad Doctor. That's right, you'll see him in all his eerie violence. You'll hear his terrifying screams. You'll watch him as he's subdued by one of our own death-defying security guards. Step right inside, folks, and see the one, the only, Mad Doctor. Oh, my God! Now they want to socialize medicine! That's a Take it easy! Take it easy. Sure, you're not the one who can drive his Cadillac to the poorhouse! You're not the one! Take it easy! Roll up your sleeve, Doc! That's a good boy! The Mad Doctor, ladies and gentlemen. See him again in 45 minutes. The Mad Doctor. Can I have one cotton candy? Sorry, lady, we're out of cotton candy. How about a Q-tip? This fine set of teakwood bowling pins is sold to the gentleman in the second row for $85. Now, lot number 16. A bankruptcy sale on behalf of the Pentagon, a firm forced out of business by the current world situation. The property to be sold consists of 16 million fine men's suits in brown and navy, 4,000 latrines in brown and yellow, numerous assorted non-returnable prisoners of war, one stepladder camouflaged to resemble a bicycle, 20 tons of Vietnamese heroin, 64 Philippine islands with inhabitants, 4 million volumes of papers marked top secret, 